afternoon. Shall we get started? Welcome to the ordination service of our beloved youth pastor, Pastor Ivan. You know, Pastor Ivan grew up at least part of his life in Russia, and my wife is from Ukraine. My wife said, she still loves you. Okay, we still love you. Well, this reminds me of what happened 74 years ago, 15 miles from here, by the way, the crow flies. There's a famous observatory um, called Palomar Observatory. In 1948, it was the largest telescope at the time on planet Earth. When they dedicated the observatory, this is what one of the speakers said. In the face of these supreme mysteries and against this majestic background of space and time, the petty squabbling of nations on this small planet is not only irrelevant, but contemptible. Adrift in a cosmos where shores he cannot even imagine, man spends his energies in fighting with his fellow man over issues which a single look through this telescope would show to be utterly inconsequential. So, but beyond what the scientists say, there's no enemies among us because we have Jesus and the blood of Jesus that unites us. Amen? Amen. So we stand today under the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ as brothers and sisters of not just this planet, but of the whole universe. Well, um, you know, last week we had a very generous lady. She's a sister of a church member who donated a lot of her furniture. Um, she sold her house and she's downsizing and she wanted to get rid of her furniture. And so a couple of us church members went over there and uh, we, we got some really nice pieces of furniture that required us to get a moving truck and get a storage space temporarily while our house is being finished. And so Alex Besman spent his day helping us load up some of this furniture but we needed some more help, we needed some muscle. So Alex knew who to call, he called Ivan <laughs> to come in with those big Russian muscles and he came and helped us. There was only one problem, the storage unit end, uh, closed at nine and we were not done at nine. And while we were there, we put all this furniture in the elevators, you had to put in a special code to take you up to the top and so instead of putting the code in for each piece of furniture, we just loaded these two elevators to the hilt we were all excited, ready to go, put in the code, it didn't work because we were there after hours. This heavily secured, you know, I guess it could serve as a bunker there in Marietta, the uh, public storage unit. So we're like, what do we do? And we called them and they said, well, we called the company after hours and they said, well, um, too bad, we can't do anything about it. We open at six in the morning. So we all decided to leave. And my wife was very worried, like, how are you going to get all that furniture done at 6 in the morning? Well, I came at 6 in the morning. Guess who was there at the gate? Pastor Ivan. Didn't even ask him to come. He just showed up because he knew I needed help. So, you know, the Bible says there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So, Ivan, you've been a true friend. And I'm so thankful for it to be part of your service today. At this time, I'd like to invite Pastor Greg to come up. The three of us pastor together, and God has called us to be in this place at this time, and it's a pleasure to serve with both of you brothers. Amen. Thank you. Pastor Greg. Thank you, brother. It is my treasure to serve with Ivan. I just love this man in the three and a half years that we've had the privilege of serving God and the saints here at Fallbrook. Ivan, I love your theology. I love your your work ethic, your gifts of organization, the list just goes on and on and on. And it is our invitation now to bow our heads as we offer to God our welcoming prayer. Would you join me as we pray? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, welcome. You, our Creator, our Redeemer, our empowering God, we pray that you will anoint this service with your influence, your inspiration, your presence. 
With you, we welcome holy angels who have guarded us and guided each of us. And in the name of Jesus, unholy angels, you are dismissed. God, we are thankful to be a part of your family. And for those who are able to be present today, who have prepared in such a wonderful and behind the scenes variety of ways, we ask for your blessing upon each of them, be they Ivan's friends or our Southeastern California Conference of Seventh-day Adventist leaders who have traveled to be here today, be it Fulbrook Church family who have engaged with potluck preparations and decorations in the fellowship hall, audiovisual team, the list goes on and on. And for our youth who have wisely decided to stay put and not travel to the mountains or the beach this afternoon. Lord, thank you for this beautiful family of God that we are gathered with today. Finally, Lord, we here today pray for Ivan's beloved and much missed family who are unable to be present in person. We pray for his parents in Belarus, for his brothers and their families who live in other countries, including as recently as yesterday, Ukraine. And we're asking you, protecting, providing Holy God, for not only Pastor Ivan and his family, but for all of our Fallbrook and Southeastern California Conference family members who also live in the Ukraine and dangerous parts on this planet now, that you, Jesus, in your all-powerful name, the Son of God, our Savior and Lord and eternal friend, will continue to anoint us with your comforting, counseling spirit who will guide us and this sacred service in the pathways of the God we love and serve. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, Fallbrook Seventh-day Adventist Church. My name is Will Pinnock, and I bring greetings from the ministerial department, where I serve as the associate ministerial director. And today we get a chance to celebrate, and I want to invite you into that. And even in moments, as we have recognized earlier, of conflict and turmoil, the empty tomb reminds us that God is still active and alive in the world today. Amen? And while we also know that there are things that happen because of signs of the signs as well. We remember and celebrate that wherever Jesus is, there is something to celebrate. Amen. Today we joined the Ostrovsky family and others overseas that are joining us online. Uh, we also um, welcome and are glad to celebrate with the Fallbrook Seventh-day Adventist Church family, the youth group who will be singing in a little bit, and um, friends, family, colleagues that are here today. I remember the first time that I met Pastor Ivan, and we were at a pastor's meeting. And afterwards, him, Pastor Kevin, Wilson, and myself, we went to have some good food. We went to a Thai restaurant. And I remember just talking and having conversation and just seeing how he was just so positive. And how he just had this smile and this laugh, and it was just so infectious. And I just appreciated who he was as a person, and I know that you all have come to appreciate him as well during your time together. We're recognizing today not just Pastor Ivan, but we're recognizing God's activity in Pastor Ivan's life. We're recognizing God's activity in the lives of different ones that have been a part of his story and are being recognized for that today. Ultimately, we recognize that God has been doing some things, that God has, that God is continuing to do some things in Pastor Ivan's life. And so I want to invite the youth group to come and, and lead us out in a song. And let's begin this time of celebration together for the ordination of Pastor Ivan Ostrowski.
Yeah, so everyone can join uh, in singing. Uh, I will encourage everyone to stand up as we sing our song, Who Am I?
So I am Jeff, and I was Ivan's roommate in seminary the final year. And no, we are not related. I get that often. Um, but yeah, we do, we do look a little bit like each other, I guess. Except for he's much stronger, as was already spoken. So uh, I want to share three different stories uh, this afternoon to explain from my perspective a little bit what Ivan is like. <clears throat> so, story number one, the final year of seminary, uh, I was kind of, I had come back from Europe for the summer and I decided to look for roommates and I found this amazing house that was on a river, there's four bedrooms and it was a huge house, and I'm thinking, I want good roommates, so I spoke to Ivan and a few other people, but as the year can, went on, a few months in, um, even though we were, you know, perfect seminary students, We had lots of people come over, and uh, I, I, I'm a, a perfectionist and a clean freak, and I noticed the kitchen was really dirty. And other parts of the house became dirty, so I, I, I get a little frustrated. I'm Enneagram One, I'm a perfectionist. So I, I kind of call like this roommate uh, discussion, and, uh, and we started talking over it. And then I decided just to do my own investigation over my frustrations. Who was to blame? Right? So, first thing I did is I went into the kitchen and looked in the fridge. And guess what? I even had like nothing in the fridge. His shelf was like almost completely empty. So I thought, okay, well, none of this stuff in the house can be Ivan's. The next thing I did is I walked around the house trying to identify items. And I found out that nothing was Ivan's. I like deductive reasoning, so I decided finally to go to his room when he was in it. <clears throat> and uh, Ivan's room, the only thing I found in his room uh, was basically his bed, his study uh, chair and his, his table, uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Not quite me, there's peanut butter, jelly, and bread. No wonder he didn't have anything in the fridge. And uh, so I concluded from my uh, investigation, uh, Ivan was blameless. And uh, his room was kind of like the size of some of your walk-in closets. So it was almost like a miniature monastery. So I also concluded, secondly, that Ivan might be a monk. <laughs> I concluded after this, uh, and all of our discussions that Ivan actually, all of our tensions as roommates, Ivan was actually never to blame. What do you know? <laughs> Story number two. Uh, I was at the time pastoring in Oregon, and Ivan had just graduated uh, a few months after I had, and we were hanging out with a number of our friends in some hot springs, which were just about in central Oregon and with some of his very close friends. And two days later, he was back actually here. He had just gotten, come back to his church here, back at home. And I get a phone call Saturday morning at 3.30 in the morning. And I'm thinking, Ivan um, was texting a late, a late at night, rolled over in his bed and decided to accidentally call me. But no, actually, I wake up, wake up and I answered the second phone call, and it actually was Ivan. Sandy, his American mom, had just passed away. He was very, very close to her, and I was actually very concerned for Ivan. And a lot of us that were close to Ivan were. In fact, I was so concerned that I called Ivan every single day, pretty much for the next month, just to check on him. And I honestly expected Ivan to go dark, to get depressed, become negative, and really take a dark turn in life. But I, to my surprise, Ivan did not go dark. Got, Ivan did not get depressed, and Ivan actually turned the situation completely around. Yes, Ivan mourned. Ivan had a very hard time going through that. But I learned that Ivan is able to take bad things that happen and give them to God and allow God to bring good out of the bad. Ivan is incredibly resilient 
and finds good in all people and in all situations. I wish I could do the same, and I just want to say, I think Sandy, if she was here today, would be very proud of you, Ivan. Story number three, kind of two stories. Ivan was a good friends with a guy named Travis in the seminary, and these guys loved to help other people. In fact, on their spare time, they would find people in need and they would go and help them, whether it would be moving, whether it would be um, cha helping change a tire on a car, fix something. They were there to help, always. In fact, Ivan actually gets energized by helping people, which I find sometimes bizarre. I'm a little selfish, I'll just be real honest. Ivan's not like that. He gets very energized by helping people. Well, on a snowy day at the seminary one, one week, uh, everyone was busy, but I think me and Ivan were at the house alone. And uh, I decided, I was like, oh, I'm just going to flip on the TV and watch something. But Ivan decided to make it a little bit more productive. He challenged me, says, let's go do some good for other people. So he helped me. We decided we found a lady who had a driveway that needed to be shoveled. And after we finished that, it took us about an hour, I thought, man, our good deeds have piled up for the day. I'm feeling pretty good. Let's go back home. We went back home, and uh, I was done. Ivan wasn't. He decided that we needed to write some uh, nice holiday letters to the neighbors. And so even though I was done, Ivan's positivity won. And he got me to sit down and write holiday cards to all of our neighbors and hand deliver them. Anyone in need, Ivan was always the first person to volunteer. And that's the type of person that Ivan is. These three stories show the type of person is, from my perspective, a good friend, a good roommate, and someone that Sandy would be very proud of. Good afternoon. It is my time for my perspective of Pastor Ivan. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Evelyn Besman, and I've been in this church, and well, I'm one of the leaders, youth leaders, and I've been in this church for about seven years. And comparing my, la my, my first few years in this church with my last, few, my last years, I feel like with Pastor Ivan, this is the most active youth I've seen in this church. And when he came here like three and a half years ago, right, he, some of the youth already wanted to be baptized by him, which, it, which shows how really inspiring he is with the youth and how he clicked with our youth. Um, one of the traits that I found in Pastor Ivan was that he constantly comes up with new ideas. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he, every time, well, he always comes up with new ideas for the youth to keep, it, to keep it active, to keep the flame going. And every time I get a phone call and I see his name pop up, I always think to myself, what idea does he have this time? <laughs> He always come, and I'm, I'm always excited to see what he has to say, see what ideas he he has come up with, and he calls everyone. He calls all the youth, see what they think of his ideas, see how it could play out, and how and if they like it or not. He always comes up with you know mission trips, mission goals, ski trips movie nights, and just little youth activities that bring us all closer together. And we all, and we all uh, just grow closer in, French, in friendship. He always strives to know everyone, and he always do, tries to develop a personal relationship with each one of us and the church as well. I have a very tiny story um, about Pastor Ivan. So I used to play soccer with CRCP students, 
and it, it was once a week. So I go, and I'm not, I'm not the brightest player out there. Let's just say that. Pastor Ivan is great. He, every time he goes on a team, that team always wins. So, but every time, he, I, every time I come, he always comes up to me and says, you're going to make a goal this time. I know you can do it. I never make goals, <laughs> and I never made one, <laughs> but, um, but he always says, it's okay, next time, next time you'll do it. So I have, a, I have this verse that reminds me a lot of Pastor Ivan. It's Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. He always tries to develop relationships and see what they like, what they dislike, their comforts, their discomforts, and he always tries to find ways to help them and to, and to comfort them in times of need and just always be there for them. And so Pastor Ivan, he has changed many lives, including the youth, this church, and the people we've reached out to by doing mission projects. He, has, oh, he is and he has always been a hard worker. And these past three and a half years, he has created a new social environment for this church that brings us all even closer together. I'm excited to see what God has in store for you next. And I'm also excited to see what big idea you have next for the youth. One verse I do want to dedicate to you, Pastor Ivan, is Philippians 2.13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Robert Berry, and I have known Pastor Ivan ever since he stepped foot on this church. I was sitting in the fellowship hall looking out through the giant paint, glass pane doors. I was looking out into the view when all of a sudden my view got interrupted. Out of my peripherals, I see a man walking across, which I quickly recognized to be Pastor Sam, which used to be our senior pastor. But trailing behind him was another young, young man who I did not know and I did not recognize. So quickly, I had to assume. Who could it be? I'm not sure. But I assumed, ah, it's probably one of those other Bible workers. <laughs> Nonetheless, I got up. And I walk towards the door, and Pastor Sam walks in and introduces this young man to be Ivan Ostrowski. <laughs> so, I end up meeting this man. Little did I know that this man would bring so much change, not only to my life, but to the lives of so many others around me. What makes Pastor Ivan stand out from the rest? I believe there are three things which make a man of God. First, a follower, prayer, and last, service. Let me explain. To be a leader, you must learn to be a follower. A follower of who? A follower of Jesus. Pastor Ivan has been allowing Jesus to lead the way ever since he gave his life to Christ. Whenever someone asks him, Pastor Ivan, what are your plans for the future? Are you scared of what's to come next? Pastor Ivan's reply is always the same. I will go where God takes me. Whenever I hear him say that, I'm reminded that he lets Jesus lead the way. Interestingly enough, he said he would actually never become a pastor. But as we know today, he is a very good pastor nonetheless. Number two, prayer. I have seen prayer work. Through all our journeys together, I have always seen Pastor Ivan depend on prayer. Whether it was hiking in Sequoia National Forest, 
climbing up to the very top of those mountains, or whether it was getting woken up by a bear in the middle of the night, <laughs> or even in the streets of Washington, D.C. I have been there with Pastor Ivan and seen how prayer has worked. And I believe that Pastor Ivan's prayers are heard by Jesus. Pastor Ivan is a believer in prayer, and because of him and his example, I am also a believer that prayer is the way. Number three, service. There are so many things to say about service with Pastor Ivan. It's one of his most impressive characteristics. How is this man able to serve so much? How is he able to put out so much energy to help others? With service comes love, joy, peace, and happiness. But also must come bravery and motivation, both of which Pastor Ivan shows. He has organized and helped with countless events here at this church and at other places. For example, he has taught at CRCP. He actually taught me some Russian. He has helped at VBS. He actually organized a lot of uh, VBS. And uh, youth outreach, probably one of the biggest influences in our community at the moment, going and helping with youth outreach, all, all thanks to Pastor Ivan. Also, some of the great parts is our youth retreats. Our youth retreats are also amazing and also grateful to have Pastor Ivan there guiding us along the way. And my most favorite is going to be obviously the mission trip, which I think is a great, great mission that we're going on. And lastly, the hiking trips that we've gone on where we encounter the bear. <laughs> Pastor Ivan has brought me closer to Jesus and it eventually led to my baptism. And I'm proud to say that Pastor Ivan was the person who baptized me. This church would not be the same today if it were not for Pastor Ivan. So with that, I want to close by telling Pastor Ivan that no matter where you go, no matter what challenges you might face, God is going to be there for you and working with you. So never give up the courage and always stay motivated because even though those dark times will come, you are helping others along the way. Thank you. Robert, I didn't quite like how that ended. He said, wherever you may go, he's stand right here, I hope, okay? <laughs> All right, so, by the way, you didn't demonstrate any of your Russian. There you go, okay. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Elder Park and your team, Elder Ciccarelli, uh, Elder Pennick, and Elder Marufo for coming here today, and now we have something called the presentation, is that right? Okay, so all of you have a part in this as well. You're what's called the people. So when it says people, then follow my lead, okay? Thank you. If you'll turn in your programs to the portion called the presentation. Leaders and members of the Southeastern California Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, on behalf of the members of the Fallbrook Church, we present to you Ivan Ostrowski to be ordained as a pastor of Christ's church. Has this congregation recognized the gift of ministry that affirms God's call of Ivan to ministry? We have. Has this candidate been examined for fitness to ministry and has he been recommended for ordination? We certify to you that Ivan Ostrovsky has satisfied all requirements for ordination. Pastor Ivan. Will you be loyal to the teaching of Jesus Christ as understood by our church? And will you readily work cooperatively with both congregation and church leadership in the places where you will serve? I am willing and ready to do so. And I solemnly declare that I do believe the Old and New Testaments to be the Holy Scriptures which reveal Jesus. The Word of God 
and to contain all things necessary to salvation. People of God's church, is it your will that Ivan be set apart by the laying of hands as a minister of the gospel? It is. We uphold him in this ministry. By God's grace, we will. Amen. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite Sierra Cheney. Oh, she didn't need an invitation. She's ready to go. Sierra. Today's scripture is uh, 1 Thessalonians 1, 3, and 4. Remember without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. May God bless the reading of his word. Happy Sabbath. Oh, Ivan is such a good friend of mine, and um, I'm so happy and so, I'm so proud of him. Um, he has blessed my life in so many ways, and so when he asked me just to be a part of this service, um, I said, of course, of course. Um, Ivan's the type of people, when you see him, your day gets better. Um, <laughs> I remember this one time in seminary, I was trying to bless him, and I left more blessed than than I was. You know, I think, yeah. So, so what happened? It was it was it was late at night, and I saw him walking. I was like, Ivan, let me give you a ride to to your to your apartment, to your to your house. And um, Ivan was like, Nah, man, it's all right. I was like, Don't worry about it. You know, it's late at night. I'll take you. It was probably ten or eleven because I used to work at the gym, and I saw Ivan walking. He's like, Okay. Um, you know, you could go ahead and give me a ride. It was about a mile away, I would say, to his house. So he still had a, a ways to go. And um, so I'm giving him a ride. And I promise you, I was going to put gas after taking him, you know, giving him a ride. And he's like, you know what? I've been praying uh, for someone to put, like, to put gas in their tank. And so that day, I was trying to bless him, and he blessed me. And that's who Ivan's been to me. Um, so this week, I, I learned a song um, and, uh, I hope that, that, um, that you're blessed, Ivan, and, and that your church and your congregation is blessed as well. Is this on? Yeah. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises and fulfillments all over my life, 
all over my life. Help me remember when I am weak. The fear will come, but fear will leave. You led my heart to victory. You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see your promises and fulfillness all over my life all over my life I see the grave the empty grave the evidence is endless all my sins are washed away because of you, oh Jesus, I see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless, all my sins are washed away, because of you, oh Jesus. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life i see your promises and fulfillment all over my life all over my life i see your goodness and fulfill all over my life all over my life I see your promises and fulfillment all over my life all over my life Amen Thank you, Pastor, for that special message. In fact, uh, when Pastor Dave was at PUC, he took his exam and was about to go to his dorm to pack to go home for Christmas. And as he was walking toward his dorm, he heard this guy he say, hey, and threw a big king size sneaker bar today pastor david and says merry christmas that was ivan <laughs> they never met before there was this man ivan just comes and throws him a big uh, sneaker bar and that's how their friendship started you always need food to start a friendship that's good that's ivan by the way, Alex, thank you for moving the flower. I was wondering what's the purpose of flower on the side of the pulpit. Now I know. And by the way, uh, Robert, you should, be, uh, you should be a pastor. I don't want to forget, so I wrote it down. But as soon as I wrote it down, our minister director kind of leaned, leaned toward me and goes like, I think he should be a pastor. I should have talked with him afterwards. So you're going to have a man chasing after you <laughs> after worship. I've been blessed. And Evelyn, thank you for you sharing. You know, I was wondering what position you were playing in soccer. But knowing Ivan, you could be go go goalie and still expect you to score. <laughs> Soren Kierkegaard once, once wrote a parable that told that shared that there was a community of ducks. And they all went to church. And there was this duck preacher preaching away a very eloquent uh, sermon. 
and they were praising God. And this duck pastor said, with these wings, there is nowhere we ducks cannot go. There is no God-given task we ducks cannot accomplish. With these wings, we no longer need to walk through life. We can soar high in the sky. And among ducks, they were saying, Amen, yes, praise God. They were really into it. They were quacking away. <laughs> and this duck pastor concluded, With our wings, we can fly through life. We can fly. And they was like, Amen. Everybody was up praising God. And afterwards, they were saying how wonderful the, the message was so convicting. It was a beautiful message. Then they left the church and waddled all the way home. <laughs> you all get the point. Yeah. Today, as Pastor Will Pennock reminded us, this ordination service is about God. And how God, how God have journeyed with Pastor Ivan to this point. And it is my prayer that as much as we focus on who he is, who God is, that all of you have contributed to his life and that we may walk out of this church that you'll be empowered to do God's will. Pastor Ivan, God has called you to serve the city of Fallbrook and beyond. You know who you are. Albert Einstein one day was going to some place to do a lecture uh, in a train, and this uh, ticket conductor, conductor came, you know how back then they used to punch tickets. And when conductor came by, Albert Einstein just couldn't find his ticket. Uh, train tickets. So he searched everywhere, just couldn't find it. And this conductor said, uh, Mr. Einstein, I know who you are. I believe that you bought the ticket. It's okay. And as he was uh, punching more tickets, he looked back, and Albert Einstein was on his hands and knees and trying to find his ticket. So he came back and said, Mr. Albert Einstein, I know who you are. And he said, I know who I am. I just don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Pastor Ivan, you know who you are, right? And today, based on 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, I just want to share with you, not teach you, not tell you, but share with you because we're journeying close to second coming, that we know where we're going. By the way, all the pastors who are supposed to be ordained, they write essay, they write, they response, and this is what Pastor Ivan said. Ministry is not that I have picked, ministry is, this is what he wrote, ministry is not something that I have picked out, but it's about Jesus who has picked me. I am to rely fully on Jesus and his guidance in my life by sharing the gospel with everyone I can, spending time in prayer, fasting, and to serve the least of these, this is the greatest privilege ever given to a humankind. And yes, I am grateful for saying yes to that decision. We are also grateful. It is about Jesus. And so, Jerry, you read 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. There's three things that Paul mentioned that's three hallmark. One is your work produced by faith your labor prompted by love, and endurance inspired by hope. So let's tackle one, one each. First, your work produced by faith. Often for pastors, we love to plan. We love to prepare. And when things go well, we feel great. But as a pastor, Pastor Ivan, we are to never forget, it's not our work that counts. It should start and end in faith in Jesus Christ. It should be all about Jesus Christ, and good works flow out of it. 
Second, your labor prompted by love. Somebody said, tell me who you love, and I will tell you who you are. Interestingly, I don't know if you ever came across a book called When Helping Hurts. Any of you read that book? A short book, When Helping Hurts. There, the author talks about how the United Nations World Bank wanted to define poverty. And they just couldn't come to consensus. So they decided to ask experts, 60,000 people who live in poverty, to define what poverty is. In fact, what's interesting is that when they asked North American people, that's us, when they asked us, this is how North American audience tend to emphasize, I mean, uh, understand what poverty is. North American audience tend to emphasize a lack of material things such as food, money, clean water, medicine, housing, etc. But when they actually ask people who live in poverty, poor people typically talk in terms of shame, inferiority, God, uh, powerlessness, humiliation, fear, hopelessness, depression, social isolation, and voicelessness. How they define poverty is very different. I do not think we should not provide stuff. I think church should be there to provide their physical needs of people. But meeting the people's needs, special people who live in poverty, is more than giving them stuff that they may need. It's to be voice when they don't have voice. It's to give them power, empower them when they feel they're powerless. And as I read this, I thought of you, Pastor. How all the previous story about you is about loving people. Your labor prompted by love. You're doing ministry because you love people. Let that never change. It is more than simply giving something away to poor people or someone in a difficult situation. You are to love them that they may experience God's love through you. And a couple of your colleagues really identified with that. Samantha, Pastor Samantha, who is chaplain of Loma Linda Academy, she wrote this. Ivan is a one-of-a-kind pastor and leader who is strong enough to lead an entire student body as PUC SA president and thoughtful enough to plan surprise parties to cheer people up and remind them of the community that surrounds them in the hardest time. He always shows up for people. Your colleagues acknowledge that. Pastor Yukaipa Jonathan Otorio, uh, Osorio said, Ivan and I, I go way back to college, and Ivan is a person that is always first ready to help and ready to serve, always willing and able to lend you a healing hand. And I just love the way he put it. Not just helping hand, healing hand. And he does it with a huge, huge smile across his face. That I agree. That's that smile. So continue to labor. In love. And finally, your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And pastor, as you do ministry, you do it in faith in Jesus Christ, love that you have experienced by Jesus, but God has called you to focus the hope that to his people, you are to keep pointing them to Jesus, that there is hope, that people may never give up. Again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope. Verse 4 says, For we know, Ivan, who is loved by God, that he has chosen you. Family, this particular passage is not limited to Pastor Ivan. It's limited to every one of us. 
we asked Pastor Ivan, what is your dream? And this is what he said. My ultimate dream is for everyone who I get in contact with or minister to be able to see and feel the amazing, awesome love of Jesus in their own lives. That they stay hopeful, encouraged, be filled with love toward God and other people. Jesus has called me out of my old life so that I can have a better life in him. Therefore, I want to be able to preach the goodness of the gospel to as many people as possible, and we need it. Use words. Pastor Ivan, God has chosen you. God has called you. We're simply acknowledging that you are his servant, that faith in Jesus, pr work prompted by love, and as you continue to point your fingers toward Jesus, giving people hope, we acknowledge that God has called you to ministry. So with that, to your previous youth pastor, who's well-loved, Pastor Jeff Harper, this is what he said to you. I see God's love shining through you, Ivan. Your enthusiasm, authenticity, your love for people, your appreciation for scripture, and your deep love for God are all qualities that I admire. May you continue to place, place Jesus first, last, and best in everything. And that is our prayer as well. That as you put Jesus first, middle, last, and best of everything, I know Fallbrook Church will be blessed, and they will also journey with you, equipping you, empowering you, enabling you to be a pastor that glorify God in everything that you do. God bless you. Good afternoon. My name is Patty Marufo, and I'd like to invite you to take your program and look at the part that says the examination. And um, Pastor Ivan, the dictionary says that an examination is a thorough inspection, but that's not what we're doing tonight because, you know, anyone who offers chocolate to someone, they pass the test. <laughs> and I have to say um, in follow up that Evelyn. I think God is calling you to be a pastor as well. <laughs> so, and all you girls sitting out there in the congregation, if God is tugging at your heart, then please respond to that tug at your heart. I think God is calling you to his service. Um, let's begin, and we'll follow along with the program. Pastor Ivan, the church is a family of God, the body of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. All baptized people are called to make Christ their Lord and Savior and to share in the renewing of his world. Now you are called to work as a pastor. It is your task to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus and to fashion your life according to its precepts. You are to love and serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for young and old, weak and strong, rich and poor. You are to preach to declare God's forgiveness, to pronounce God's blessings, to share in the administration of baptism and the Lord's Supper, and to perform the other responsibilities entrusted to you. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of his grace and strengthen them to glorify God in this life for the life to come. Pastor Ivan, do you believe that you are truly called by God and his church to serve as a pastor? I do. Do you now in the presence of the church commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? Oh yes, I do. <laughs> Wonderful. Will you be diligent in reading scripture and seeking knowledge of those things that may make you a stronger minister of Christ? By the grace of God, I will. Will you endeavor to minister the word of God so that the reconciling love of Christ may be known and received? 
with the grace of God, I will. Doing a great job so far. What you undertake to be a faithful pastor to all whom you were called to serve, laboring together with your colleagues in ministry to build up the family of God. With the grace of God, I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life in accordance with the teaching of Christ so that you may be a good example to your people? With the grace of God, I will. Will you persevere in prayer for yourself and for others? With the grace of God, I will. May the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the prayer of ordination. And I want to invite uh, Elder Keith Molitor to come on up. We're going to have you here at the podium. I, sorry, Ken. Ken Molitor. All right. Sorry about that. Thank you for being forgiving. You can sit or stand right here. And as, as we have you come up, I also want to invite other pastors that are ordained here in the congregation. If you could come on down as well. We want to gather around Pastor Ivan and lay hands on him uh, at this time. And as you all are making your way down, I also want to do something a little bit differently today. Pastor Ivan has a strong bond with his youth and he's been empowering you all and you all have recognized that and shared that today but he also wants you to be a part of this prayer too and so as the pastors come and gather around ivan i want to invite you all to come up as well i want you to make a kind of semi-circle around the pastors you're going to come around them and then as you as you come around kind of uh, have some also coming off of the stairs over toward the congregation. You are extension of each and every member here today, and uh, we want to recognize that. If you all can, can, can allow them to come around you, you guys can go around in the back and go all the way around. Thank you so much. And you can also go on this side, if you come on this side as well. Come on around. There we go. Thank you so much. You all did such a great job today singing. It was beautiful. And if we can have a few of you that come off of the stage kind of toward the congregation as a, as a representation that you are extending from the congregation to Pastor Ivan as well. It's a great day great dedicated man. We appreciate him. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Eternal God, we bring you thanks. We offer to you our praise for a demonstration of your eternal love in the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, we rejoice in what you have done in the life of Ivan Ostrovsky, who is being ordained today. We thank you for the service that Ivan has given to your church here in Fallbrook, particularly toward our youth, and we pray that his sense of calling may be renewed daily. We thank you for the talents and skills he has exercised and which he brings to this charge and for his integrity and his faith. The Savior has called him, he has taught him, and he has greatly used him and today he stands on the threshold of a lifetime of ministry. Our passionate concern, Lord, is that we use him way beyond his high ex expectation. We know that you are able to do far more abundantly beyond all we ask or think, according to the, your power that works within us. We thank you for his parents, his loved ones, his friends, his teachers, his mentors, godly men and women who have contributed to the life of Pastor Ivan, preparing him uniquely for the occasion to which you are calling him. Father, as a good shepherd, please go before him and lead him in the plain path to do your will and to do it courageously. Keep him from sin and in his success may he remain humble, recognizing that we serve an all-powerful and loving God. Given the passion of our Savior who commanded us all to go, therefore, and teach all nations, 
baptizing them in the Father, name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And finally, in the words of the Apostle, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Amen. Amen. Pastor Ivan, you get to stand while I preach at you. <laughs> and he smiles, right? No, I have been tasked to give the charge today for your ordination. And before I do that, because I know, I know that youth means everything to you, I think it's beautiful that you wanted them to be up here in your prayer of ordination. And I do want to say, uh, before I give this charge, I want to echo what um, Elder Marufo and Elder Park said. Uh, Robert, I hope you will pursue pastoral ministry. <laughs> and Evelyn, I hope you will too. The spirit of Christ is alive and well in you. And I want to say to young and classic, <laughs> that if you feel you're not an upfront person, God is calling you to. I've heard too many times I could never be a pastor because I can't speak in front of people. Next to death, that's the second greatest fear of humanity, is speaking up front. But if God is calling you to be a pastor, in the words of Jesus, don't be afraid because his grace will always prove sufficient. And so I say to young and old, because we have many pastors who have changed course and are wonderful pastors. And so I know that there are some standing here today or sitting here today that maybe hadn't even thought about it before, but the spirit of God, I believe, is moving upon you. We need more past pastors in the gospel work. So if you feel at some point God may be calling you to pastoral ministry. Go to seccministerial.org. That's the website for our ministerial department. And there you can reach us, email us, call, because we would love to talk and pray with you. Okay? We would love that. All right. You're old. All right, you're old. <laughs> but you, I even, something tells me no matter how old, how old you get, you'll be young at heart. And throw me a few snicker bars once in a while. That would be, that would be great. Pastor Ivan, I'm going to try to keep this brief, but I'm going to speak what I feel is truth. I was asked one time, recently in fact, what does it take to be a successful pastor at a church? And I responded, it will take nothing short of the supernatural power of God. Nothing short of that. What God has called you to do, Pastor Ivan, you absolutely cannot do in your power. He has called you to be and to do what is impossible for you to do in your own power. But you know that because we've seen the fruits of you relying on God and the Holy Spirit to do what only the Holy Spirit can do. But I also share these words with you because as you go forward in pastoral ministry, it will get harder. There will be times you will ask God to take the calling away from you. Just as Jesus in the garden asked for the cup to be removed. But you will say, I know because of God's grace in you, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I want you to take courage in your calling for what, as I said, is impossible for you, is possible with God. It's possible with Jesus. And when I say with Jesus, I want to use a word picture that I think will be helpful as I continue to give you this charge today. When I say with Jesus, I want you to think about living and ministering at the feet of Jesus. Living and ministering at the feet of Jesus. For before you're a minister with Jesus, you are a disciple of Jesus. 
A disciple, an apprentice of Jesus goes wherever his feet go. They follow the master. Their eyes are on his feet. When he sits, you sit with him. When he stands, you stand with him. When he walks, you walk with him. When he speaks to others, you speak with him to others. And when he is silent, you are silent with him. You see, Jesus invites you into the very life he lived when he was here on earth. When he said something like this, I don't say anything I don't hear the Father saying, and I don't do anything I don't see the Father doing. Jesus said living life at his feet was the only thing, the only thing that is important and necessary. And no matter what happens around you, this posture can never be taken away from you because it's a posture of the heart. It's a posture of the mind and it's a posture of the will. I want to share these words uh, with you from, as one of my colleagues says, Auntie Ellen. And she was talking about this passage in Luke chapter 10 of Mary and Martha, where Mary was sitting at his feet. And he said, Mary was storing her mind with the precious words falling from the Savior's lips. Words that were more precious to her than Earth's most costly jewels. The one thing that Martha needed was a calm, devotional spirit, a deeper desire for knowledge concerning the future, immortal life, and the graces necessary for spiritual advancement. She needed less anxiety for the things which pass away and more for those things which endure forever. Jesus would teach his children to seize every opportunity of gaining that knowledge which will make them wise into salvation. The cause of Christ needs careful, careful, energetic workers. There is a wide field for the Marthas with their zeal and active religious work, but let them first sit with Mary at the feet of Jesus. Let diligence, promptness, and energy be sanctified by the grace of Christ, then the life will be an unconquerable power for good. You see, when you choose and determine to live your life, your entire life in ministry at the feet of Jesus, you have chosen to make Jesus himself and his kingdom the very navigational center of your life in ministry. It might sound something like this. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything in ministry will be added unto you. See, three things will happen when you live and minister at the feet of Jesus. You will be a pastor who abides with Jesus. You will abide with Jesus like he says in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches, abide in me, and you will bear much fruit. And then he says these words, but apart from me you can do nothing. You can do nothing of eternal and kingdom value. Abiding with Jesus. You will often withdraw to a place of solitude. We often say there's so much to do in so little time, and yet Jesus, the scripture says, often, not once a month, often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. But I would argue he was the busiest person who ever walked the face of this earth. But he found the time to get alone with his father. This is the only place you will grow in the continued conviction and certainty of your calling. This is the only place that will give you the courage you must have to stand strong in the conviction of the certainty of God's call on your life to be a minister of his gospel. You will abide. Number two, and I know you already do a lot of this, you will be a pastor who does a lot of holy hanging out. A lot of holy hanging out with Jesus and with others. And it might start with throwing a snicker bar. It might be on white, white rapid river rafting or all of that stuff that you do. It might be playing soccer. It might be sharing pizza. But Jesus does a lot of holy hanging out. In fact, it was his hanging out with people that got him into the most trouble. And so I encourage you, hang out with the church and hang out with those who aren't in the church. Because remember, Jesus was accused of being a drunkard and a sinner. And so we as pastors have to ask ourselves sometimes, are we being charged with something that we're not because we're loving people the way that Jesus loved us? He did a lot of holy hanging out. You see, when Jesus said, love one another, he didn't stop there. He said, love one another as I have loved you. 
That's a sacrificial love. That's the agape love the Bible speaks of, that Jesus speaks of, and that Jesus transforms you as you live at his feet. And finally, the third thing. You will be a pastor who makes disciples with Jesus. Not for Jesus, but with Jesus. Go make disciples. This is our MO. This is our marching order. This is our great co-mission with Jesus. When Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I met your treasurer today. He's been a treasurer here for a long time, and she's going to love what I say next. You don't need a budget to make disciples. But you do for all the fun you have, <laughs> which helps with the holy hanging out. Jesus didn't have a budget. And look, we're here today. We are here today as followers of Jesus Christ because he abided deep in the Father. He did a lot of holy hanging out, and he was faithful to the mission his Father had given him to make disciples. And I want to share with you, Ivan. You will find, as I'm sure you already have at times, the ministry Jesus has called you to with him to be very difficult and sometimes very heavy. But according to Jesus, in his own words, the ministry he calls us to is an easy yoke and not burdensome. He didn't say it would be easy work, but he did say if you let him shoulder the work with you, the weight of the work would be light, easy, and not a burden. Come to me. There you go. God's, God's inviting somebody else. <laughs> Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble and heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so, Ivan, I charge you this day to keep abiding deeply with Jesus, your Lord and Master, and do a lot of holy hanging out with him every day. And as you do that, Go and make disciples. For you will just naturally and organically make disciples because as you live at the feet of Jesus, you will be inviting young and old to live at the feet of Jesus with you every day. And in doing that, you won't be making disciples. Jesus himself will be making his own disciples. And Jesus will be empowering them to live this life of abiding with Jesus himself. And do all this knowing do all this knowing in the words of Jesus that he is with you always, even to the end of the age. God bless you, Ivan. I would like to officially Acknowledge Elder Ivan Obstrovsky. Did I say that right? <laughs> As an ordained minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pastor, Southeastern California Conference, our entire administration, our team of 200 plus pastors are celebrating today and we acknowledge your call to ministry. We celebrate the call that God has placed in your heart, and I am so looking forward to the ways that God is going to continue to utilize your skills and talents and your heart right here in this place. This truly is a special day as the church acknowledges your calling, your gifts, your call to ministry here today. And I just wanna pause as well to acknowledge your family your parents who could not be here with you today, but what a blessing that, as Pastor Ciccarelli often says, you're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, and these witnesses are your family today, who will love on you, who will support you, who will care for you. So this congregation is filled with lots of moms and, and dads and brothers and sisters 
who are here to love on him, even when his family cannot be here with him. So Pastor Ivan, because this is a special and memorable day, we come bearing some gifts. So, Pastor, I know that you probably have this special book in your library, and you probably have more than one. But today we are gifting you a Bible with your name engraved on it, and this will be a special reminder of this day, the day of your ordination. So this Thank is... You. We also have, for the pastor, a certificate of ordination. It is a small piece of paper, but it is so very meaningful. And at the exit, you will find additional copies of this same certificate, and we want to invite you to sign those copies, which will be something that you will be able to keep as a reminder of today's ordination and the congregation where it took place. And the certificate of ordination says the following, to all who read these words, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be it known that Ivan Ostrovsky has given satisfactory evidence of his call to and having accepted the sacred work of the gospel ministry was ordained by Southeastern California Conference of Seventh-day Adventists on February 26, 2022 in Fallbrook, California. In witness of the same, we have signed our names. And this one copy has the signature of conference administration, all of our officers. So this will be for you, Pastor. And we also have your credential, which says that this is to certify that Ivan Ostrovsky is an ordained minister in regular standing in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and is authorized to perform the duties of said office for the period ending December 31, 2023, by order of Southeastern California Conference and no, his ordination doesn't expire in December of 2023. It'll just be renewed along with all of the rest of the pastor's um, ordination um, credentials. So Pastor Ivan, this, and by the way, that comes with a little bit of a pay raise. And, um, but let me tell you that, <laughs> But in the interest of full transparency, the pay raise is more symbolic than substantial, but nevertheless, <laughs> it comes with love. And here is your ordination certificate. And Pastor, may God continue to bless your ministry here in this place and wherever Jesus calls you, you so to much. do his work. Thank you. Thank you so much. There's one more. <laughs> I, Ivan Besman. Uh, I feel very good. Microphone, microphone. Hol Today, our church rising for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Go and, and round all the world. No 500, 10,000 people go to our church. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Ivan. I really like his name, Ivan. He's good. I remember clearly 2018 when I came to Fallbrook, some of the Adventist church, I had hair. <laughs> and here I am today, standing in front of you. Um, but my car broke last week. And uh, at least I thought it broke last week. Better he died, that's it. Um, but I, I was, planning to go to the church board meeting, and I got all my stuff, I got in the car, nothing there. Like, well, I guess I'm not going. Um, the following morning, I called Alex Besman, and says, hey, could you come help me charge the car? And he says, yeah. And he came on the way, he charged my car, and uh, then I was able to go places. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that I may have talents, I may have things that I give, but beside, I mean, outside of all of you, I'm nothing. And when it comes to Jesus, um, there's nothing good in me. 
uh, but the only goodness comes from him alone. And uh, today there's just so many people to thank. And I, I just <laughs> don't know what to do. But at the end of the day, I just can say that in Fulbright Church, I don't know what I would do without our youth and their parents. And today I feel um, like it's not fair because I feel like all the parents need to be up here with me um, because so much they have done. And I'm just grateful for all their dedication and stuff. But today I'm grateful for each and every one of you because um, it is not about me. It is about what God is doing in our lives. But I do want to acknowledge some people that have helped me in ministry to get to where I am. And even though all of you are, I don't have 20 hours. So I'll be, <laughs> try to be really quick. And as I said, without the church family, AV team, the kitchen crew, the elders, the, the deacons, the, and so many others, one thing I can assure us is that the best acknowledgement is going to happen when Jesus comes. And he says, you may not be acknowledged in this earth, but the greatest one is coming with Jesus. What are you doing private, he's going to acknowledge openly. And um, I'm grateful for all of you, but I want to also thank uh, the Houghton family, um, Dan, Karen, who have invested in me here in Fallbrook. I want to thank Pastor Sam. Even though I only was here with him for six months, I think one of the most humblest and praying people it was Pastor Sam, and I learned so much just for that. Pastor Greg, I'm just so grateful for the colleague. There you are. Uh, I remember when the youth, oh no, with your son Jeff and the other family said, let's go to Mount Gorgonio. And it's the tallest mountain in Southern California. And guess what? Pastor Greg is up there. Surprised all of us thinking, how did you do that? But oh, overall, um, yeah, you be, beat us young people. <laughs> so I'm um, really grateful for you for um, just working together. And it's just a privilege. And thank you so much for everything. I want to thank Pastor David uh, and his family as a senior pastor. Um, with your experience in being a lawyer, I'm grateful that you still didn't put me in jail <laughs> um, and put me on trial. But through those experiences, you know, not yet. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> But thank you so much for <laughs> having patience with me. And I just love my pastoral team. Working with you is absolute privilege. I want to say thank you to Les um, Zoldbert. And he's in Big Lake Youth Camp. And I remember I was before that somewhere where my ministry was, uh, something was happening and didn't go the way I expected. It was terrible. I was thinking quitting ministry. But then I went to Big Lake Youth Camp. And Les was there with uh, Pastor Ben. And I know, Robert, you got accepted in Big Lake Youth Camp. And I'm happy for you. And I know some of you may also get in there. And I just want to thank you for your dedication and mentorship. Um, I want to thank all the teachers at Andrews University, those who put their time and effort to teach me more about Jesus, the Bible, to help me, um, lead me to Jesus so that he can speak to me through the Holy Spirit and his word. I really want to thank Sandy Roberts, Ernie Furness, and Jonathan Park. Because when I was a PUC, I didn't know where I was going to go. But thank you, because something you saw in me, I didn't see in myself. And I just want to thank you for pouring in me in so many ways. And I know there, there's not enough thank you I can say. Uh, as an international student coming from Belarus, Russia, uh, it means the world to me. I want to thank to the current administration, uh, what you guys have doing for us pastors. And I feel like I'm a, a friend. I'm not just somebody on the top of me, but it works with me. And that shows um, very much. I want to thank Lafitte Cortez. If you're watching, when I was student body president at the PUC, I thought I knew everything. And I had no experience in leadership. I just wanted to change the world. And when I got elected, I knew nothing. I was just like, well, I'm not ready for this. But Lafitte Cortez, he has stepped up. He mentored me through the whole time. And he made sure that I felt like somebody's there no matter what. I want to thank Pastor Marvin Ray and Pastor Glenn Gibson in Napa Valley, California, where I ministered in their church for a year. It was so awesome. They have guided me, te taught me what it is like to be a pastor that I will be always grateful for. Pastor Bradford Williams, who is no longer alive. He was in Chula Vista. I spent the summer with him. 
And he made sure he started this separate church service in order for me to preach every Sabbath. I was scared, but I said yes. In Laurelwood Academy, Steve Hanton, Randy Thornton, um, James Turner, my dean, we, the, the ones that ported me when I was a young person, they saw something in me. I, I'm forever grateful for your dedication um, towards my life. Marlene Watson, Lanier Watson, uh, took me to PUC, took me places, and I'm here today. I'm grateful for my friends, for Jeff, for David, and many more. I see some from PUC, just uh, from Loma Linda. Um, when I'm in tough situation, I can call you and talk to you. And I'm forever grateful for Easy right there. Awesome. Thank you for being here today. Um, I want to thank Grandma McDougall, who is in Oregon, who is my Oregon grandma, who has all supported me, took me mission trips. And I love you very much. I don't know if you're watching, but you are dear to my heart. And I'm there for you through tough challenges and things that your family, our family, my family in Oregon are going through. I want to thank my family, my parents who are right now in Minsk, Belarus, who are praying for a younger brother who is barely trying to get away from Ukraine, for my bro oldest brother in Switzerland, and the second oldest brother in Germany who will be here in a week for four, four days just visiting me. Without you, with your dedication, by sending me away as a bird pushing the kid. <laughs> that was nice. I love you for that. I know you're watching. It's like 3, 4 in the morning, but you're up. You're amazing parents. I love you dearly. And uh, I just want to also th say thank you to, uh, well, I'm grateful for Sandy Hanton, who uh, passed away in 2019 in her sleep. And uh, it was probably the hardest moment of my life that I felt the loss of a person that you love. But I'm looking today, I'm just kind of grateful she doesn't have to see everything that's going on in the world. But I love her. I know she will be proud. And one day, I want to see her face to face. And just say thank you for what she has done for me. And lastly, I want to thank my best friend, a person who has always been there for me, somebody that I wouldn't be standing here today, and that's Jesus. And I want to say, Jesus, thank you so much, because without you, I wouldn't be here today. When the world fails, you never failed me. So thank you. Thank you, Fulbrook Church. I love you. So, so thank you. Keeping the claps going, huh? <laughs> we have come to the end of an amazing time together, recognizing God's call in the life of Pastor Ivan. Thank you for sharing your heart and your love for Jesus and recognizing those that have been a part of your journey. You know, when you come to the end of a church service, it's always a blessing when there's food, amen? And today at the end of this ordination service, we have some food. Amen. And so when, you, when we leave here um, behind in the fellowship hall, you will enjoy some, some treats that are there for, for you. On the way out, I also want to remind you that we have these certificates here for Pastor Ivan. Please sign them. It doesn't matter where you do it. You can sign anywhere on the, on the certificate. And we'll have them out there in the back as you exit on the way out. At this time, we want to close and have our benediction and just recognize again the goodness of God in the life of Pastor Ivan. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, it is a blessing this Sabbath to have spent this time remembering, spent this time celebrating and recognizing the goodness of God and the ways that we've been touched through the life of Pastor Ivan. God, may you continue to bless and lead him in his ministry here at Fallbrook with his youth group, parents, and many other members here. God, we thank you, and we continue to lift up in, in a special way his family. May you continue to see his brother in Ukraine safely through. And God, we 
we pray for that situation in its entirety. And God, we thank you that you are moving even at times when it's difficult to see. And God, we hold on to you and we trust you to see us faithfully through. Just like that smile that we get from Ivan, may we also see that smile from you. May we recognize it, walk in it, and journey with you day by day. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for attending today.